you know at 3 p.m., Vinny and Cheech separately, and you know because their cell phones are separate, arrive, and you'll excuse the, the lasagna joke, at Don Vito Lasagna Social Club. Fifteen minutes later, Don Vito arrives. Immediately following Don Vito's arrival, three guys in there, Eddie the Hook, Tommy One-Eye, and Bobby the Butcher, depart the social club. And they're shown for the next 45 minutes within 100 feet of the router and Spanky's Boom Boom Lounge. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole thing I normally go through with law enforcement groups. What happened? Don Vito came in, said, you three guys get out of here, I got to talk to these people. Those three guys go down the block, they hang out in the bar. At four o'clock, Eddie and Tommy and Bobby return to the club, Vinny and Cheech leave. Conversation's over, Don Vito told them what they need to know. 2.25 in the morning, those two guys who've been briefed by Don Vito meet Eduardo the Mule on the docks. And we know that because we're tracing his SIM card. Two days later, in all of Don Vito's territory, there's an influx of a new type of Colombian cocaine. Okay, gee, what does this mean? It means they met with a Colombian cocaine connection, he gave them a trunk of stuff, now they're moving it. All of this without surveillance, without informants, just from cell phones, Wi-Fi, and common sense. This is the future of monitoring of you. This is an artificial intelligence program which I have seen work and is already being implemented by two na so-called national law enforcement organizations. Trust me. What I'm about to say, I'm saying because it's true, not because I don't like the FBI, and I don't like the FBI, but this happens to be true. The FBI is a genuinely inept bunch of guys as far as, you know, in the field investigation. And they try to resolve that by doing things like huge rewards, huge payments to informants, uh, technical means, forming task forces where you've got a guy in his wingtip shoes working with two NYPD cops who really know how to go out and hit the bricks. They, they try to remedy it, but they're huge. They spend a fortune on technical means for surveillance and investigation. I guarantee you that this AI program or something very, very similar will be, be, will be implemented, at least beta testing in the U.S. within the next six months. Guaranteed. I give you my personal guarantee. Try to collect if I'm wrong, but I give you my personal guarantee. And by the way, most likely it's not going to be Don Vito and Joey the Hook. It's going to be Ahmed and Mohammed spent an hour in Sammy's shawarma shop. I'm going to show you something in a couple of minutes as far as monitoring. Let me tell you, I'm a New Yorker and I've lived in Israel. So I've seen the worst of terrorism that there is. And yes, terrorism is an Islamic phenomenon more than not. But even I'm horrified by the way people are being targeted because of their religion. And I'm going to give you an example in a second. So all of these technical means, I've got to tell you, they're going to be targeted at people who make the government nervous who make the government concerned, who the government can't pigeonhole, like maybe hackers. Let me give you two real-world examples of cell phones for investigation. Center for Complex Network Research, Northeastern University in Boston, they went to the phone companies and they said, give us location activity for 100,000 cell phone users. And the telephone company said, yeah, okay, here you go. They were able to develop from proximity to cell sites and triangulation where those 100,000 people were over the space of a year. And they developed really, really detailed, you know, population migration patterns and what people do on an average day. By the way, both of us, most of us, we don't go far from home. We're boring. We eat in the neighborhood. I, I mean, I could have told you that without a $5 million study, but 
Nevertheless,